Welcome back to our eScriptorium training tutorial series. Um, today we're going to be covering some functions uh, that will just kind of help you to use the platform better, uh, as well as looking at some more advanced functionalities uh, for things that some of you may want to do. That This may not apply to everyone, but depending on what you want to do uh, with eScriptorium, um, you may find some of these things quite useful. And also just kind of, in some cases, depending on uh, the material that you'll be using. Um, so first of all, something that I don't think we covered previously, but that is fairly important, uh, is how to navigate inside of the segmentation pane. Um, so you may have already noticed a couple of things. One, when you initially click, uh, you get, and this might be a bit surprising, you draw a new line segment, which you can reverse here. Um, let's say you want to navigate within the pane. So we'll begin by zooming in. And something else you may have noticed is that the, the zoom feature is a little bit clunky. It's not the easiest thing to use. All right, so once we've zoomed in, and if we want to move around inside of uh, this panel, of course, we can't just click. This will draw a new line. Uh, instead, we need to hold down the control button. And this will allow us to navigate within the pane. This is particularly useful if, say, you've applied masking uh, and you want to correct polygons. Um, something that we've, we've mentioned uh, a little bit before. Um, so we'll notice that in this case, our polygons all seem to be in, in pretty good shape. Uh, but if, say, there were polygons that needed correcting, uh, zooming in and then navigating up and down, uh, the segmentation pane might be something that you would, you would want to do. Um, you can then zoom back out. Another trick, uh, particularly if you find that you've zoomed out too far or if you've zoomed in too much, uh, and you need to reset things. Honestly, the, the quickest way to do this is just to hit refresh, making sure, of course, that if you've made any work that you've, you know, you've saved it. Um, all right, so uh, that's the way to navigate uh, within a zoomed in pane. Uh, a couple of things we mentioned again briefly before, but of course, if you want to draw a lasso, you hold down shift, and this will allow you to select multiple lines or multiple points within the line. That's an important feature to keep in mind. We've, we've mentioned it before, but it's something to, uh, to recall, and that we'll actually see an application for in a moment. All right, something else that may apply to some documents, probably not to all. Oops. Go back. Um, if you, say, have a PDF uh, in which some of the pages are on their side or in the incorrect order, if you navigate to the source image icon here, have that open, um, you can flip uh, the images as you need. Uh, and this might be useful in some cases. Um, you can also, and this is probably something that, that primarily applies to manuscripts, but you can download the full-size image here. Uh, and I find that this is useful when, when, when dealing with manuscripts, perhaps less so with print. You may not have much use for this. All right, so those are some of the things that you can do here that we probably should have mentioned earlier, but that are just good to keep in mind. Um, now, moving on to slightly more advanced functionality, so let's close this out. The first thing that I want to show you, uh-oh, <laughs> uh, so something went wrong here. We'll just move to the next page. There we go. All right, uh, is, uh, is this feature, uh, is, is the toggle mode. So if we go over here, we'll make sure that this icon is highlighted. And as you can see, this will give you a list of each line, and so numbered consecutively, or well, generally consecutively. We can actually close this out, so we don't need to see that. Uh, if you want to see the corresponding numbers over here, click here, and this will give you the ordering display. And so you'll see the, the numbers correspond here. Um, if for some reason these lines are out of order, and this will occasionally happen uh, for a number of reasons, sometimes in initial segmentation, sometimes if you've if say you've made corrections within the segmentation, you can reorder these lines. So you'll hit this button, the toggle sorting mode, and then you can adjust line the order uh, as you need to. So of course this would be incorrect, so we can move it back. Um, and this will just allow you to move one at a time. You can move it as far down or as far up as, as, as you need to. And you can keep track of what's going on over here. So as these, these correspond. So like I said, this may not apply to everyone. Uh, it probably won't. Uh, but in some cases, you may find that the reading order has been has been messed up by, by the segmentation or by something that you've done um, previously. 
All right, so let's switch that off. But we'll remove this. So the next thing that I want to cover, um, and again, this will only apply to some people, depending on what you want to do with eScriptorium, uh, is layout analysis. Um, so marking the different elements of the text on the page. So there are a couple of things that you have to do in order to do this. So let's begin by just seeing what it'll look like once you've done it. So here I've uh, identified different uh, regions uh, within the layout of the page. So here we have page headings, we have the main text, uh, we have a footnote, and we have page numbers. Now I'll show you in a moment how to apply these to the page, but the first thing that we want to do is to go back to description. Um, and so if you look over here under ontology, down here and region types, um, now when you, you'll see uh, your different options. Now, in any document, when you first generate it, you are only going to have, uh, if I remember correctly, commentary, illustration, and main and title. Uh, I've added footnotes, uh, page headings, and page number. And then down here in line types, I've added poetry and section headings. Um, so you can add as presumably as many as you, as you want, depending on what kinds of components you find in your text. And obviously, this will vary from one text to another. 19th century text might have marginal commentary. So this is an, uh, something that you could add. Um, but each of these would be distinct regions. So if we go back to our example, um, let me move forward where, somewhere where I've annotated. All right, let's open up our regions mode. So you can see that the main part of the text encompasses Again, the, the main part of the, the, the text body, and each of these are distinct. Below the level of, of, of this level of regions, you also have line analysis. So if I take region mode off and move my cursor over here, you can see that I've highlighted these lines as poetry. Um, uh, line analysis applies at the level of the line, so not within the line. If, say, we had a Quran verse right here, um, we could not identify that uh, as distinct with uh, the way the descriptorium is, is configured right now. But for something like poetry, where at least in our text, uh, it will almost always be marked off as separate lines, this is something that you, that you can identify. Um, section headings uh, might be another, another place. All right, so once you've added your region types and your line types and selected them, you can go back to your text. Let's just go to somewhere where I haven't added uh, anything. Let's back to more with poetry. So what we're going to do is begin by highlighting uh, the region mode icon. And I'm going to start by drawing boxes around each of these. So once I've drawn a box, I can click on it. And when you click on this T, you can select here. So we're going to put page headings. I'm now going to identify, uh, draw a box over the main part of the text and do the same thing. So find the region type, go down here to our footnotes, and then our page number. All right, um, now I'm going to toggle off, whoops, Switch to region mode. So I'm going to refresh because I it's a faster way to do it. All right now I'm going to identify these lines as poetry. So what I'll do is click on one and then hold shift. Actually, what am I saying? The fastest way to do this is simply to draw uh, a lasso. Oops. Okay, here we go. All right, and now I can go again to T. I can set these as poetry. I'll do the same for these as well. All right, um, so those are the, the sort of basics of layout analysis. Uh, we'll be talking further along about what you can do with these specifically. Um, primarily, this is going to be for training models, uh, for identifying issues of segmentation in your text, and for identifying uh, these things automatically. Uh, but for now, you know kind of how to do it. You can practice a little bit uh, in case it's something that you're going to want to do. Um, further along. All right, good luck.